Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to the channel where we bring you Christian commentary about the things that matter. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a clip from a sermon of Mike Todd's. But before we begin, let me establish, this is not meant as a sinful attack, but rather as a biblical critique. Now, for those of you who don't know, Mike is the head pastor of Transformation Church, which is a prosperity gospel, seeker-sensitive, hype church located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. In this particular video, he decides to make some of his trademark false promises, of course, in the name of God. Watch this. Faith is built in an anchor and his name is Jesus. And so when he tells me something, now my response is, if you say so. That should bring joy to somebody right now. Because there's some things that God has said about your family. That your whole family would be saved. And you just bail Pookie out of jail. But if God says your family is going to be saved, you better jump in there with some faith and say, if you say so. He said you were going to own multiple houses and be able to bless other people with them. And you look at your credit right now, you better agree with God and say, if you say so. God said that we would be able to impact the world with the gospel and I would still be able to be home and be a loving father and a loving husband. And God, how do we do that? You got to travel. You got to do this. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. I'm not consulting other seasons. There is so much wrong with that clip. It's almost incredible. This is absolute prosperity gospel teaching. There's no way around that. And most people, well, they're being deceived by it. The first false promise that he offers is that if God said your entire family is going to be saved, then you need to believe that promise. If God personally told you that your whole family would be saved, then it doesn't matter if you just got your family member out of jail. That person, well, they're going to be saved. This is his first promise. Now, keep in mind, he's not saying that it's a guarantee for all people across the board. He's saying it's a guarantee if God told you this personally. So he's not a universalist. In other words, he doesn't believe that everyone is going to be saved, and that's a good thing. But he's still teaching falsely. Where in the Bible does it give you a guarantee that your entire family will be saved? Where in the Bible does it say that God will personally tell you specifically that your family, specifically, is going to be saved? We're all happy to believe this. Just give us a chapter and verse. The problem is, you will not find one. So unfortunately, we can't believe it. Because humbly, I just want to say, this is not a promise of God. It's a figment of your imagination. Take David, for instance. In Acts 13, 22, it is said of David, quote, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. David was called a man after God's own heart. And more than this, Jesus himself is called the son of David in Matthew 1, 1. David is part of the great lineage of the Messiah himself, and he was personally involved in the promises of God being fulfilled in Israel. Yet despite all of this, David's son Absalom was a traitor to his father and actively tried to murder him. In Psalm 3.1, David says this, quote, Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? And here's something interesting. That psalm was actually written by David, quote, when he fled from his son Absalom. So here's the point. David, the anointed king of Israel, placed on the throne by God himself, David, the one who slayed a giant when he was just an adolescent. David, perhaps one of the most notable people in the lineage of Jesus Christ himself. Even this David had an unbelieving and wicked family member. And yet, Mike Todd thinks that it's a good idea to tell the people in his congregation that God might just speak to you personally and guarantee saving faith for your entire family. Again, where is this in the scriptures? Humbly, I just want to say this teaching coming from Mike Todd is absolute nonsense. If you have a family member who does not believe, try your best to persuade them. Set a good example of Christ-like behavior and Christ-like love. Give them every opportunity to accept Christ. Pray for them. And always remember that it is God alone, not you, who can change the heart of a wayward sinner. If you could change the heart of a sinner, you would have changed your own. But you couldn't. Christ had to do it. We must simply trust God no matter what the outcome is. But it gets worse, because Mike Todd also says that God has personally spoken to some people in the congregation, guaranteeing them multiple houses. Again, humbly, I just want to ask, where do we see this in Scripture? Luke 12, 15 says, quote, Take care 
and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. End quote. God has not promised you multiple houses, but that's okay, because life is not about the abundance of your possessions. This hyper-focus on wealth, this ultra-focus on materialism coming out of churches like Transformation Church, this is false teaching rooted in promises that the Lord never made. If you have a goal to invest in real estate, if you would like to own and rent multiple houses, then work towards that goal by God's grace, for His glory, by the standard of His word. That's great. I'm not saying that you have to have only one house in order to be a Christian, but please do not pretend on the basis of your own personal feelings that God has somehow promised you multiple houses. That is not a biblical promise at all. And it's actually false prophecy because you're putting words in the mouth of God which he has not spoken. And what does Jesus say about false prophets? Well, in Matthew 7:15, he says, quote, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves, end quote. So beware of Mike Todd and Transformation Church. Stay away. This is a wolf in sheep's clothing. More than this, you can clearly see in that video that Mike Todd is mixing in true promises with false promises. The Lord has guaranteed that his church will be victorious. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus says this to Peter, quote, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, end quote. At the end of the clip, Mike Todd also talks about affecting the world with the gospel of Christ. This is a real promise for the church from God in Scripture. But multiple houses and your whole family being saved? These are not real biblical promises. This is a sneaky way, in other words, of mixing in true promises in an effort to lend credibility to the false ones. We need to know how to tell the difference so that we don't get deceived by this nonsense. Now, what is the conclusion of all of this? Why is it that we should be passionate about this topic as Christians? Well, quite simply, this will lead people to being disillusioned with God's word if we don't put a stop to it. Ezekiel 12, 25 says this, quote, For I am the Lord, I will speak the word that I will speak, and it will be performed, end quote. So rest assured, when the Lord actually promises something, for instance, like the promise of his son redeeming his people, it is a guarantee. You can rest in it and find hope in it always because it will come to pass and praise God for that. The real promises of God in scripture will always result in fulfillment and this in turn will strengthen our faith. Praise God. By contrast, when we make up fake promises which are not guarantees from God in his word, when we take these little ideas and little feelings that pop into our little fallen brains and make them into promises from God himself, the opposite effect will happen. When you have a false promise like, God's going to give me multiple houses, if in his providence he does not give you those houses, you're going to become disillusioned with God. Because in your eyes, he's a liar. He didn't keep his promise. He told you one thing and did another. But the God of Scripture would never do that. Proverbs 15, 13 says, quote, A glad heart makes a cheerful face, but by sorrow of heart the spirit is crushed, end quote. You see, the Lord has clearly said in his word that all of his promises will come to pass. But when you make silly promises on behalf of God, and these do not come to pass because, of course, he's under no obligation to make them come to pass, this will crush a person's spirit. What's truly mind-boggling is that some people think it's unloving to critique the prosperity gospel. I disagree. It's actually infinitely more unloving to preach it in the first place. Mike Todd's unbiblical preaching will undoubtedly cause people to leave the idea of Christianity altogether. Beware of this false prophet. And please know this, I do not offer any of this correction from a high and mighty position. I am nothing but a wretched sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So let's pray for Mike Todd that he would stop preaching this nonsense, this falsehood, and instead that he would turn to the truth of God's word. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please give us a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Rumble channel as well, just in case YouTube ever takes us down. The link is in the description. And before you go, take a look at this list here. These are the people who make all of the free content you see on this channel possible with their monthly support. Today's highlighted channel supporter is Gerald S. If you also want to help and become part of the solution today, hit the link in the description. The support 
starts at just $5 a month, which comes out to just 17 cents a day. Every little bit helps us immensely here on the channel. So I hope you'll consider joining the Truth Army today, and until next time, fight for truth, never surrender, and keep your eyes open. Thank you, and God bless.